In the previous video, we introduced the main ingredients to model our string. Its position is given by the function r of capital X and t, so finding this function is our goal. In this video, we will use conservation of mass and conservation of momentum to derive a partial differential equation for r. That is a first and important step to finding our function r of capital X and t. Let's rewind first. We had our string in its starting configuration, just lying somewhere, and then every point of, a str of the string has a certain capital X, a 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 capital X. So I've drawn it also. So for example, this here, we have our X1, and this X1 is glued to the string. So no matter where it moves, it always has this X, capital X1, and a different point X2 over here. So in the start configuration, it might be here, but then if it moves around, the capital X2 is attached to the string. Those are called the Lagrangian coordinates. Then our goal is to find out where it is, to find some function r of uh, capital X and t, so this one, which tells us how our string is behaving, how our string is moving. So our r has components x, y, and z in general. Then we had a few important quantities. First of all, the stretch ratio. So if you pull the string, it is stretched by a factor dr dx, and, the, and then its norm. And this was called lambda, our stretch ratio. What we also will need is the unit tangent. So for any parametric curve r of uh, capital X, then the a unit tangent is given by dr dx. And since we no want to normalize, we have the t hat equals 1 over lambda times dr dx. And we will use conservation of mass. So if you have a small part over here, of uh, size d capital X, it's mapped to some uh, part in space. Uh, uh, and then uh, the mass, of course, remains the same. You're just moving it around. So the dm equals rho zero, which is just the mass density if it's lying as it is, so we know it, times dx. So those are our main ingredients. Uh, let's uh, find the uh, motion of the string. For that, we will look into two arbitrary points. We take capital X1 and its position and capital X2 and its position. So at a certain time, we have an R of capital X1 and T and an R of capital X2 and T. And they both, of course, have their tangents, their unit tangents here and over there. What we're going to do now is we're going to use the conservation of momentum to derive a set of PDEs for the components of our function r of x and t. For that, we take one tricky step first. We say our velocity v equals dr dt. Well, that looks pretty obvious, right? But the tricky part is here that we are taking the partial derivative with respect to time, meaning we take the capital X as constant. So what we do, we take some segment of the string, labeled as a capital X, capital X1 or whatever, it moves around and we look at the velocity of this particular part of string. Of this. So that is, has a constant uh, capital X, so that's why we take the partial derivative. Now, once we know the velocity V, we can compute the momentum dp equals uh, v times dm, so there we go. We have something for dm, it was rho zero times dx, so there we have our dp, and we can find our entire uh, momentum by adding all the dps up from x1 to x2, so that gives us our total momentum integral from x1 to x2 of dp. So there we go. And now we want to apply Newton's law, which states uh, total force equals m times acceleration, or total force equals the rate of change of the momentum, which is the same. So we want to find the rate of change of momentum, so the p dot. So we, for that we need uh, the p at t plus dt. And note that the time is only occurring as argument of the dr dt. So here we have a time, and here we have a time. So uh, for the rate of change of the momentum, we take p at t plus dt minus pt, divided by delta t, and take delta t to zero. So 
what we do over here. So we basically only have the drdt at t plus dt minus the drdt at t divided by dt. So if you take dt to zero, that only gives us another derivative with respect to time. So we get a second derivative of r with respect to t time squared, uh, which gives us the rate of change of the momentum. Now, this has to be equal to the total force on the string. So we have a force here, and we have a force there at both points, and here some modeling takes place. We say, okay, we have a slender object, so our a tangent force yeah, is only in the direction of the normal of the string. So only forces, if you have our string here, only in, in this direction. No shear forces. That is, of course, because we have a slender object. So that's one physical assumption. And the second physical assumption is that once you tell what the lambda is, so I specify a certain lambda here, I do a small lambda, uh, then the t of lambda is also specified. The amount of force I need to get this lambda is uh, given once I know the lambda. So if I have a bigger lambda, I have to pull harder. And you can determine this relation, of course, experimentally. Do a number of lambdas, you get your t of lambdas, well, of course, until your string breaks, but okay. Uh, so this relation here is basically known, it's given, it's known for us. So our tangent force, tangent force t, is a t of lambda times the unit tangent t hat. And we know what our unit tangent is. It equals dr dx divided by lambda. So there we are. Then we can uh, equate the two. I know the uh, rate of change of momentum is the t at x2 minus t at x1. Uh, now the change of momentum is an integral, so I like to have this right hand side here also as an integral. Well, I can do that in a silly way. I can say, okay, the t uh, as an integral, that is the integral of the dt dx. So that's what we do, because integration and differentiation cancel out. So this right hand side is in fact also an integral, the integral of dt dx from x1 to x2. And then uh, I have uh, this integral equals that integral, or the difference of the two equals zero. So there we go. And now, Last important step, uh, the x1 and the x2 are arbitrary, uh, so I can choose whatever x1 and x2 I want, but always this integral has to be equal to zero. That is only possible if the integrand is zero, so our integrand over here is zero. And uh, that gives us, if we take the dt dx to the other side and use what we know of it, that, that this yields a partial differential equation for our capital R of x and t. Because once you know your r of x and t at some time, you can compute everything. You know the lambda, you know the t of lambda. So here we have a pretty complicated partial differential equation for our components r of x and t, because they uh, mix uh, via this stretch ratio lambda.